Okay, so we are the FNIR group, and my name is Jeff Percanti, and my group mates are John Paul Player, Matt Sargent, and Ryan Elwell. And the first thing I'd like to tell you is some background about this project. Uh, we are designing a brain monitoring headband using near-infrared spectroscopy. What happens is infrared light, an infrared LED is aimed into the forehead, while a photodiode is used to detect scattered near-infrared light. Hemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin absorb the infrared radiation, so changes in the magnitude of light indicate that there are changes in brain activity. Our design was based around a DSP chip, which will make the design more compact and easier to work with. This is more suitable design because it allows doctors to monitor clients during experiments involved. The goal of this work is to transform both the desktop and portable versions already made of this design into a wearable device. The final product will be a headband with all the features of the desktop FNIR imager. The DSP chip is pivotal to the saving of data from the headband, from the photodiodes, and to distributing of the correct pulses to the hardware uh, devices. Uh, this is done using Code Composer Studio, this program right here. And first you have to set up the, uh, the BSP, which is the peripheral output of the pulses to the headband. And as you can see here, it's a lot of setup, and that was my first task throughout the semester. Next, I had to create a program that distributed the correct pulses to the hardware using this peripheral. And that can be seen right here. So what this does is it runs hardware, or it runs a, a program to distribute pulses serially throughout uh, a running program. And this thing works. As you can see there, there are pulses happening every so now and then to turn on the uh, correct hardware devices. So the, uh, the analog inputs and outputs are going to take the uh, output from the photodiodes and distribute it to the, the DSP chip to be uh, recorded. All right, so the part that I was most involved in, other than designing the hardware, was the simulation in Mentor Graphics of the circuit. And the first thing I had to design was our binary counter, which you can see here. Here's the output of the, the clock circuit that got divided. And it goes from single to divided by two, four, and eight. And this basically brings us to our whole bit that counts to 15, from 0 to 15, from 0 to 15. So, and I imported the clock as a symbol, and then we had to build the rest of the circuit. Here are, is the analog MUX that Ryan built, and these are going to control the different photodiodes that are being controlled. And right here are the different wavelengths for the LEDs. And this is the simulation after it's been run. Right here is the initial clock, and these are the three stages of the photodiodes, or of the LEDs, sorry. And these are the different <coughs> uh, photodiodes that can be read at one time. And this is uh, selecting what photodiode is being read. This is the output of the analog MUX. And you can't really see because of the different sine waves are so close together, but it's really reading all four of these sine waves in between each one of these with in between each one of these all right in this portion <laughs> of the project uh, concentrated on this was the hardware portion of the project and the purpose was to create a control box to interface between the DSP board and the headband that we'll be creating. Uh, what this signifies is <clears throat> the red LEDs signify switching between the different modes of the LEDs we'll be doing and uh, basically we'll be doing an off state and two different wavelengths to make readings. And the green 
how they signify uh, changing readings from photodiodes, which will uh, be read from the MUX. So as we saw earlier, the data is collected using the four photodiodes, which are arranged around a single LED. So that means each photodiode or each detector needs to turn on separately for each wavelength duration. So we see that the two faster outputs of the counter are used to feed the selector bits of a two to four multiplexer, which is right here on the daughter card for the DSP board. So for each wavelength, we see the selector bits switch between four states, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, which correspond to each photodiode. And so on the oscilloscope, we see the master clock up on the top. Below that is a single um, time duration for a LED. And below that is an output of the faster photodiode, which shows the, the time length for each photodiode to be on. So we see below that, it's switch, the outputs of the multiplexer are switching. I've fed in four test signals, which are sinusoids of varying amplitude. And so during each clock period, when an individual photodiode is on, the DSP chip needs to take up to, or take 200 sample readings. And therefore, in programming the chip, you need to know how fast the sampling frequency needs to be and how it's related to the input clock frequency. And so our calculations showed that if the clock input is constant, then the sampling frequency should be 200 times the clock frequency. Um, now one advantage of this circuit is that the clock does not need to be constant. So each pulse will hold its state indefinitely until the next edge occurs. And so thus the DSP board, which has to turn off its input at each point take the output readings, or to take the input readings, it can operate without the state resetting every time. So in summary, the purpose of the FNIR project is to build a modular headband with logic that mimics the more static modules which have been previously developed. This includes communicating input-output data to and from the MECBSP so that it can be analyzed modifying the hardware so that the output signal is amplified without noise, and adding redundancy to the modules so that any number of them can be cascaded on the headband. We made significant progress in the hardware development as we were able to successfully design a functioning LED photodiode input-output circuit that can interface directly with the DSP board. We also, in the future, want to improve on the current logic methods as well as research and hopefully implement a wireless communication system for transmitting data so that the entire system can be portable and modular.